welcome to episode 14 of Inspirations by Dr. Gail. Today, my topic is talk is cheap, but goal setting is crucial. This is the last part of the series titled Creating Your Roadmap to Success. Throughout this series, I've emphasized the importance of identifying your purpose, connecting it to your passion, and choosing to use your gifts, talents, money, other resources, education, and power to make a positive impact on others. In this final episode of the series, I'll share a story about two brothers, one who became highly successful and the other who didn't. This story is based on one of the interviews that I conducted for my dissertation research with a man whom I'll refer to as Lawrence. In episode 11, You Can't Be Big If Little Got You, I explained that for my dissertation research, I conducted interviews and collected questionnaire data in order to answer this question. Why do some African Americans who experience adversity during childhood become successful adults, yet others don't? Now here's the story about Lawrence and his brother. Lawrence spent the first 12 years of his life on his grandparents' farm in South Carolina. One of his brothers, who was two years younger, and a cousin, also grew up on this farm. During childhood, Lawrence had to cope with many problems, including poverty, his grandfather's alcoholism, his mother's alcoholism, and being abandoned by his biological father, who left when Lawrence was three. According to Lawrence, he's not my father. All he did was supply the sperm. In spite of these problems, Lawrence chose to keep a positive outlook. He said, my childhood was probably the happiest time of my life. I'm really fortunate in that regard. Lawrence's optimism also surfaced when he spoke about working on the farm. Here's how he explained it. I started working on my grandparents' farm when I was five or six. I did chores because I wanted to, not because I had to. I would get up at five or six o'clock and get in the field while my brother was still in bed. I picked cotton, chopped tobacco, and plowed behind a mule. Because I was big for my age, when I was eight or nine, I was hired out to work on other people's farms. By the time I was nine or ten years old, I figured I wanted to be in business. In addition to dreaming about becoming a wealthy businessman, Lawrence also dreamed about playing college football. At school, Lawrence displayed the same strong work ethic that he had about farm work. And his three main role models, his grandmother, one of his teachers, and his mother had a big influence on Lawrence. No one ever yelled at me about doing my homework and that kind of thing, Lawrence explained. My grandmother raised me and she taught me a great deal. She was a real believer in education. She only had a third grade education, but she always felt that if she had gone further, she would have done much better. Regarding the teacher who had a strong impact on him, Lauren said, My sixth grade teacher was sort of the toughest teacher I ever had. Up to that time, I had been a straight-A student, but she was tough. You got the impression that even though you were trying to do your best, it might not be enough. Although his mother was an alcoholic, Lawrence respected and admired her. My mother proved that she could do it, he said. She was the first person in our family who ever graduated from college. So it was her example that made it a reality for me. Like Lawrence, his younger brother was also very smart and talented. My brother could do anything he wanted, Lawrence said. He was brighter than I am. He's more personable. He's everything more than I am. Today, I would be described as a nerd, but he was more outgoing. He wasn't an A student, but he was a good student, very bright. Even though both brothers were smart, obvious differences between them surfaced early in their lives. Referring to his brother, Lauren said he was lazy and still is. He thought life owed him something from day one. You know what he said? I'll never forget it. He was a real ladies' man. He always liked women. His dream was to have a son. This was a kid who was seven or eight years old, and he's talking about having a son? I was amazed. I was nine. 
His dream was to get married and have a son. You know why? So when he grew up, he could have somebody to take care of him. We grew up in the same house, same grandparents, same farm, slept in the same bed. He always seemed to think that life owed him something. Lawrence also said that his brother resented the fact that their grandparents often compared him to Lawrence. As a result, his brother would tell him, you think you're better than me. When Lawrence was 13, he and his brother moved to another city to live with their mother and stepfather, who owned a business. This is when Lawrence became even more aware of the effects of his mother's alcoholism. Regarding his mother and stepfather's drinking, here's what he said. It was hereditary. There are no social drinkers in my family. They're either drunks or they don't drink. My grandfather was an alcoholic. My grandmother's sister had seven children. Five are alcoholics. When we moved with my mother and stepfather, they would get drunk every weekend. In hindsight, looking back on it, it's clear that my stepfather didn't understand that my mom couldn't handle liquor. They'd get tighter and tighter, and he was a social drinker, a heavy social drinker. They were both snookered every weekend, but he could stop. She couldn't. Although his mother and stepfather had decent jobs, a lack of money in the household was also a problem. This problem made a lasting impact on Lawrence, who said, I wanted to make money. My weakness is money. It limited me, but I wanted to figure out how to make money. I saw my parents fighting over money all the time. They spent more than they took in. I didn't become an alcoholic because it scared me, the idea of losing control. Second, I was too cheap. It's the same reason I don't smoke. In spite of these family problems, throughout his secondary school years, Lawrence continued to work hard and kept his dreams in mind. During that time, his mother had two other children, a boy and a girl, by her second husband. Because of his hard work and determination to become a wealthy businessman, after graduating from high school, Lawrence was admitted to Dartmouth College, an Ivy League school. At Dartmouth, He continued to work hard and graduated Phi Beta Kappa. But at some point, his dream of becoming a wealthy businessman changed into a dream of becoming an attorney. Because of this, he enrolled in Harvard University, where he eventually earned a law degree. At the same time that Lawrence was pursuing his dreams, his brother was on a different path. As an 11th grader, his brother was president of his high school class and even got to meet with the South Carolina senator multiple times. But he also started drinking alcohol while in high school. Instead of going to college, Lawrence's brother decided to join the Army. During this period, he began to use illegal drugs. It's such a waste, Lawrence said. But in terms of his childhood dreams, his brother's dream of becoming a father did come true. According to Lawrence, my brother has three kids. Although he didn't grow up with him, the 16-year-old has the same attitude as my brother. What amazes me is that my brother did the same thing that our father did to us. He had three kids and then disappeared. He used to be preoccupied with his father, just like his kid is preoccupied with him. Because of his brother's alcohol and drug use, at the time when I interviewed Lawrence, He told me that his brother was often unemployed and was still struggling to find his way in life. But Lawrence's hard work, determination, and dreams had paid off. At the time when I interviewed him, he was the vice president and general counsel of a large corporation that has franchises throughout the U.S. I shared the story about Lawrence and his brother with you for two main reasons. First, The story illustrates a message that I repeated in several of the earliest episodes of this podcast. That message is, no matter what you've been told or what you've experienced, you are enough. This means that you are good enough, smart enough, talented enough, and if you work hard, you can accomplish great things in life. Second, the story is a good example of the importance of setting realistic goals. For example, starting in childhood, 
While living on their grandparents' farm, both Lawrence and his brother had big dreams. However, Lawrence's goals were realistic and healthy, but his brothers weren't. Both brothers had a challenging childhood, yet, unlike his brother, Lawrence was willing to work hard to make his dreams come true. His brother, on the other hand, wasn't willing to do the required hard work. Instead, he dreamed of having a son who would take care of him one day instead of vice versa. Like Lawrence and his brother, when we were children, most of us had big dreams about our future. As we grew older, we continued to have various dreams, and some of us shared them with our family members, friends, and teachers. But, as the title of this episode states, talk is cheap, but goal setting is crucial. So here's the main point that I hope you'll take away from today's episode. In addition to a commitment to hard work, your roadmap to success should include realistic and healthy goals and a strategic plan to accomplish them. Stay tuned for this week's Personal Empowerment Challenge. This week's Personal Empowerment Challenge consists of 10 exercises that can help you do three things. Set short-term goals, set long-term goals, design a plan to increase the likelihood that your dreams and goals will become reality. In your Personal Empowerment Notebook or Journal, please do the following. Number one, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next three months and the steps that you'll take to make it happen. Number two, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next six months and the steps that you'll take to make this happen. Number three, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within one year from now and the steps that you'll take to make it happen. Number four, Write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next three years and the steps that you'll take to make these dreams and goals become reality. Number five, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next five years and the steps that you'll take to make this happen. Number six, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next 10 years and the steps that you'll take to make it happen. Number seven, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next 15 years and the steps that you'll take to make these dreams come true. Number eight, write a paragraph that explains what you'd like to accomplish within the next 20 years and the steps that you will take to make these goals become reality. Number nine, each month, review your progress and identify the goals that you've accomplished. Then add your next steps to help you continue to make progress. Number 10, please share these exercises with children and youth in your network so that they can start planning early in order to make their dreams become reality. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you'll tune in next time to hear the first episode in my new resiliency series, Making Lemons Out of Lemonade. For more information about Inspirations by Gail LLC, please visit my website, www.drgailthompson.com. That's www.drgailthompson.com. I-L-T-H-O-M-P as in Paul, S-O-N dot com. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this podcast and hit the like button. You can also hit the bell in order to get reminders when new episodes have been created. You can do this through my YouTube channel, Inspirations by Gail. If you're interested in the theme music for this podcast, please check out music by Aaron Nimbus on iTunes. This music was created by my wonderful son, Stephen. In the meantime, please remember this. In addition to a commitment to hard work, your roadmap to success should include realistic and healthy goals, and of course, a strategic plan to accomplish them. Until next time, hugs and blessings. I'm Dr. Gail L. Thompson.